Let's just go ahead and jump right into our bag tag match. You know the deal, Bradford hole one. You just want something that pushes straight through this gap, and then you want something that skips into this hill and up into the right. It does everything like that, but it picked up and rolled down the hill. That's really the only thing that you have to be afraid of on this hole. So I'm left with about a 35, yeah, 35, 40 foot putt uphill on my first putt of the day. We're playing strategy golf right now. Thanks a lot, Brandon. That means a lot. So hole two is just wide open, 450 feet, going crazy flex forehand with my nuke. And on the tee pad, I did not think this was coming back because there was a headwind, but this thing was perfect. It gives me a nice little roll at the end even, and I am there for my birdie attempt. As he eyes down the target. Foot fault. Good layup. Could you hear me? Thanks a lot for that, Brandon. And yes, I could hear you. And it was very unfortunate because you parked that hole and you think you're going to get a birdie on that hole and the rest of the car is going to get par. But thanks for that. I'm just, I'm just going to leave it at that. So we're even through two, moving on to hole three. I threw this one nice and high because I've gotten ground play on this hole before. And I just leave myself with a nice little tap in for my birdie. So I'm one under, moving on to hole number three. First birdie. Should be two. Hole number four, actually, not hole number three, but hole number four is just uphill, probably the only hole I'm uncomfortable with here at Bradford, and of course, it's my box. That's just how disc golf works sometimes, so I backhand in Athena, it flips up a little bit for me, finds a gap, and I actually end up in the fairway, which is very, very surprising. Circle two putt. I try and give this a run. Pier just didn't fade on me. I also threw it a little too high, so it just wasn't good, but this is what I have left for my par tester. Very, very nice to hit that and moving on to hole five, which is also a backhand hole. You can throw a forehand here if you have something that'll ride left for you. But this one, I throw a Lozado. I probably should have thrown something like a Quake or something overstable, but not as stable as a Hex. And I just went dead straight, hit a tree, went down. Now I take my proxy and have to pitch up and try and secure my par. Really nice approach shot there. And I have a stress-free par, which I am not complaining about at all. Hole number six is a very scary hole because jail left and jail right, and you just want to stay in the center of the fairway. And I do just that, but I throw it so incredibly low, but I get an insane amount of ground play, skips, everything, that I end really far down the fairway, and I'm left with about 75, 80 feet, and I want to jump putt this and try and give it a nice little run, throw it a little too high. Again, the pier just wasn't fading on me, and guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to record my tap-in, and I missed my tap-in from about 8 to 10 feet, and I hit band. So... My body language is bad, my morale is down, and I'm just not feeling great now. I'm at even, I could easily be two under right now, and I'm scrambling to save par on a hole that I know I can also get birdie on. So everything's just like slowly falling apart for me, or at least it seems like it's falling apart for me. And this is what I have for my par, about a 25, 30 footer, circle's edge. I have to straddle out, you don't really see this tree that is in front of me, but I have to straddle out, super awkward stance, this is what happens. Super big par save there. I feel like if I went bogey bogey, especially the way that the bogey bogey happened, I probably just would have quit. No, I'm kidding. I would never quit. But I, mentally, I probably would have checked out. Now, this hole, it's unfortunate because I was trying to go big hyzer on the left side and just have it dump in, but I do this weird little hop thing that I've never done before since the moment that I started playing disc golf. And I used to do that when I started playing disc golf because I thought it was gonna generate more power, but that's just not the case. <laughs> and it just threw off my timing. So I'm now scrambling here for my par. I give it actually a kind of a good run with the proxy, and this is what I have left for my bogey. Very thankful to hit that, but again, I went bogey, par, bogey now, and I'm one over. Everyone else on the card's kind of doing well, kind of doing you know better than me so far. So I step up to this hole, knowing I kind of need to get it down there. I take my nuke, throw it low on a crazy Annie, and as it comes out, it just takes this wicked ace run skip. And at first, everyone was like, this is gonna go in, this crazy skip, but I ended up over here, and it was kind of an ace run based on where my putt ended up. But here is what I have for my birdie. Played with pretty much every single chain on that basket and it still just did not want to go in. So here is hole nine, rounding out the front nine. I need a birdie here. Usually I play this thing out wide and to the left, but I early release it just ever so slightly and I hit a tree and I'm scrambling again for another par. So very frustrating round. I'm just playing basically 
scramble disc golf, which is very, very frustrating. So plus one on the front nine. Now we're moving to the back nine here, and I know at Bradford I can score on the back nine. So hole 10, taking a hex, and that's just a simple little flick. Smooth as butter. So that is going to be a very, 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 very nice thing to see come out of my hand. Also a very nice thing to see a putter go in the basket, especially from a distance that I've missed and got a bogey on. And yeah, so we're at even now. We're moving out of hole 11, and this one is just my bread and butter. It's a nice little flex with a quake. It's going to flex out to the left, and it's just going to either, you know, ride to the right, or it's going to just slide on the ground, which it exactly did there so we are making this one for another birdie so we are staying on this birdie train of two and we are moving a hole 12 which just fits my shot shape i've never really birdied this hole before surprisingly but you're gonna see here i take my force and usually i throw a raptor here but there was a slight little headwind so i wanted something a little bit more overstable and i push it long and i just have to pitch this one up for par so staying at one under now moving on to the next hole, you're going to see that this is an uphill, probably a backhand hole, but I decide to flex it anyway, hello Justin, and I go ahead and flex, or I forehand a Athena, and I probably should have forehanded a Quake, I just mentally can't throw a mid-range on this hole, I really don't know what it is, I have to go back to Bradford and just throw mid-ranges on this hole, because it is a mid-range all day long, and I'm just throwing fairway drivers <laughs> so i went super super long and i just have to pitch up got my par staying at one under this one hole 14 downhill you kind of know the deal if you know bradford at all and i'd throw this one really low with my hex barely misses that tree and i get some more ground play and i actually do have a nice little circle two putt opportunity here just straight uphill so will i make it hopefully I don't. I hit basket and we're staying at one under. I absolutely need this hole. Weston, you're in the way, buddy, but it'll be okay because as soon as I start the throw, he gets out of the way and I throw a perfect Athena backhand. You're going to see at the very end right there, it skipped over to the left and I absolutely parked it. So very, very, very nice tap in on a hole that I was not expecting to get. You know, this is a hole on my ace run bucket list. I would love an ace on this hole, really an ace in general, but I, this hole in particularly, I would love an ace. I threw this one probably, this was probably one of my worst shots all day other than, you know, that nuke into the tree on hole eight <laughs> or hole seven, whatever that one was. But this one was unfortunate because usually I, I can park this one or I can put this one within circle one and give myself a birdie look. I got my par and I'm staying at two under. Hole 17 here, I take a Raptor. There was a tailwind, so I'm like, this thing is going to be more than an enough disc and it's going to fade and it's going to go to the basket. And I throw this thing on a little bit of flex and it's riding a little bit left before it decides to fade out. But I think some wind just got straight under the disc and it just dropped it did not want to fade at all so this is my look at my birdie i try and give it a run but it was just an incredible layup <laughs> so hole 18 i absolutely need this birdie i'm two under just a mediocre round at best if you want to call it that and i just throw my nuke just sky high and it was just not good i'm pretty much over this round at this point and this is where I left you can see very off in the distance probably 350 playing all of 350 is the basket and I just throw my nuke exactly how I threw my nuke on the tee shot not good at all sky high I know I need this 100 foot jumper to get three under and to beat somebody else on the team but I don't do that